Do you ever watch a movie, an anime, or even a TV series, and at the very end, after the credits roll, jump straight onto YouTube to see what everyone else thought about that movie, anime, or TV series? What if I told you, when you went to go do that search, nothing came up, no results, nobody talking about what you just watched. The only videos out there in existence seem to just be release trailers and maybe a couple of snippets from the show. It sounds like nightmare fuel, doesn't it? Well, that's exactly what happened when I finished Future Man. And that nightmare ends today. The Magic School Bus, The Hunger Games, OJ Simpson, The Arbiter from Halo, James Cameron, Time Traveling Osama Bin Laden, and really vulgar and downright stupid cunt humor. What do these things have in common? That's right. Future Man. And it is easily one of the best TV shows I have ever seen. And I'm absolutely disgusted at the fact that nobody else seems to be talking about it. Future Man had a three year run between 2017 and 2020 and I am only just finding out about it now. And I only found out about it because my fiance is obsessed with The Hunger Games and by extension, Josh Hutchison. And just so happened to randomly recommend this show of all things to watch by using this clip to bait me in. And well, it worked. I guess all those thirst trap TikToks that come up in her For You page finally paid dividends to me. And I, I think I might be safe because I've got like, I don't know, five inches on the guy. Just forget the fact he's talented, super wealthy and well, kind of hot. Future Man is a hard show to describe because it's, well, so many things wrapped into one. But to try and boil it down, it's essentially a time traveling sci-fi parody following regular dude Josh Fodderman, who just finally beat his favorite video game Biotic Wars that was said to be unbeatable. Upon completion of the game and himself, the game's two main characters, Tiger and Wolf, spawn out of thin air in front of him and recruit Josh to help them save the world from the real life biotic threat. The two of them appeared there in front of him because they time traveled back to that exact moment when he beat the game because biotic wars, or as they called it, training, was sent back in time by their people to track down the one person that could actually complete the game and be their future savior. But obviously games or more like simulations in this distant future are far different from video games in our time. So we've got regular guy living with his parents, Josh Fodderman, accompanied by socially inept killing machines, Tiger and Wolf, looking to set out and stop an everything cure from being released. As in the future that they came from, this cure happened to turn everyone into biotics and created a dystopian future. Fortunately enough, while Josh isn't the brave warrior they expected to find, he does happen to work at the exact laboratory where this cure is being created by extracting possum seed as a janitor. I guess he won't have the highest clearance, but hey, that is good enough. It's also now just kind of dawning on me that this whole vaccine will turn you into a biotic storyline clearly aged really poorly considering what went down back in 2019 which i guess if you're a conspiracy theorist may go to tell you exactly why this series is so unknown turns out the government was trying to hide the truth from us so we're all going to turn into biotics no but seriously this series is about so much more than that and goes so 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 much deeper than that. It even goes so far as to predict James Cameron's second Avatar movie as being water themed. Future Man has this perfect balance of the writers clearly caring about the sci-fi genre and time traveling and actually going so far as to sometimes take these things seriously, but also just completely disregarding it at other times for the sake of a joke. And then kind of flip-flopping back sometimes to take this knowledge to make a joke land even funnier if you understand the context behind it. What it also has is so many pop culture references and meta commentary that I personally genuinely did not understand. But don't let that discourage you, okay? I'm just a dense Aussie dude with a very minimal understanding of pop culture. But even I found this series absolutely hilarious and overall really enjoyable. But if you actually know a thing or two, and honestly, it's probably even a strength if you live in the US, you're just gonna enjoy this show that much more. Cause you know, you'll end up having far less jokes just fly straight over your head than I did. And you wanna know two of the best 
part that I can't say about a lot of shows that come out these days. One, Future Man actually has an ending and quite a satisfying one at that. And two, Future Man does not overstay its welcome. It is only 34 episodes. You can finish it over like one weekend or something and it will be the best use of your time. Now, you might be saying to yourself, damn, this Aussie dude is doing a lot of talking and saying a hell of a lot of nothing about this show that is supposedly so amazing. And you'd be right. Because the fact is, and I don't say this lightly or with any sarcasm in my voice, Future Man is so good that I would genuinely be doing you a disservice by spoiling it for you. I shit you not, this show is better than Stranger Things. It is funnier than The Office. It's better than The Good Place. It's probably even better than The Boys. And I have really been enjoying The Boys despite major superhero fatigue. And honestly, I'm, I'm gonna do it. I'll go so far as to say that Future Man is better than Breaking Bad. I've actually never seen Breaking Bad, so I can't genuinely make that statement, but I'm gonna do it anyway, because how else am I going to convince people to watch this show if it isn't any better than uh -huh. this? He told me everything. And dare I take this one controversial step further and say Future Man has deeper and more profound character development than any of these series. Okay, maybe that one's a lie, but come on, it is just so good. Now that does leave us at a bit of a crossroads. I want, nay, need you to watch this show and have a fantastic fun time doing so, but I refuse to outright spoil it for you. So after putting my thinking cap on and, you know, thinking for a little bit, the only way I've found to do this is by going into heavy detail about some of the weird, wacky, crazy things that happen in this series completely out of context so that you couldn't even consider it a spoiler because it literally makes absolutely no sense until you bring it into context. And for the cherry on top, I'm also going to add in a couple of AI generated out of context moments that didn't actually happen in the show, but apparently ChatGPT thinks did happen. So then you'll truly have no idea what is going on. And maybe this will entice you a bit or just deter you completely. We'll see. All right, let's, let's begin. begin. There is an entire episode based in James Cameron's house where one of our protagonists falls in love with the house's AI, learns Whoa. Navi, and shows the AI mercy with a very emotional shutdown and a final speech spoken in fluent Navi as a send-off. In one episode, the characters travel to a future where people have genetically modified their bodies to have various enhancements. This leads to some over-the-top and absurd scenes, including a man with multiple penises. One of our protagonists, Spit Roaster Dog, feeds it to unknowing people, gets really good at volleyball, and leaves the crew to become an underground world famous chef. Two of our protagonists, Josh and Wolf, must compete in a virtual reality game that measures who can sexually please a robot more. One of our protagonists is unfortunately the victim of a terrible miscommunication and nearly sleeps with a past version of his own mother from the 80s. Our trio travel to a future where technology has advanced to the point where people no longer need to use their hands, which leads to some amusing outcomes. There is a near entire episode centered around one big misunderstanding where Josh Futterman dresses like a woman to fake sexually explicit photos in order to prove a husband's illegitimacy, but it turns out the husband was not straight. In one episode, Josh becomes the leader of a group of survivors in a post-apocalyptic future. However, his leadership style involves making everyone wear roller skates and forcing them to dance to 80s music. The following is a quote from the show, or it could be AI generated. There was no downside to Coca-Cola, period. If you have the chance to try it, I strongly recommend it. Two of our protagonists, Tiger and Wolf, are forced to compete in a cooking competition to prevent a future food shortage. This competition becomes so heated, it feels like an episode of Food Wars. One of our protagonists becomes surprisingly good friends with OJ Simpson in the 80s. And this is a recurring joke, as we all know why that might not have been such a good idea with hindsight in mind. There is a scene where Josh, Tiger, and Wolf 
travel back to the 80s and end up at a coca cola fuel party with James Cameron. And lastly, this isn't even an out of context scene. I just have to say that Derek Wilson's performance as Wolf is easily one of the best acting performances I've ever had the pleasure of watching. And it is absolutely fucking criminal how dry his IMDb profile is. I want and need to see more of this man, so hopefully somebody recognizes his talent in the near future. And I mean, Seth Rogen was an executive producer on Future Man and is currently an executive producer on The Boys. And all I'm saying is this guy and The Boys just kind of a match made in heaven. And don't get me wrong, Eliza Coop and Josh Hutchison performed amazingly. And the trio really had an amazing dynamic. And plus, Josh did a far better job in this role than he did in The Hunger Games, in my opinion. But just god damn did Wolf ever steal the show. Derek's clearly got range too, he absolutely nails the serious moments, the emotional moments and was just so fucking perfect for the series comedy as well. So with all of that being said, why? Why did I make an entire spoiler free video on a 2017 sci-fi series that is even more obscure than another one of my favourite series Zoids? at least if we go by the size of each of their subreddits. Because me, personally, I'm nowhere near knowledgeable enough to make a crazy analytical masterpiece of a video on a series with so much meta commentary and pop culture references that really did just fly straight over my head. I mean, sure, I might have got some stuff, but a series like this absolutely deserves that in-depth treatment. So my job and the entire reason I even made this video is essentially to be a shepherd of sorts and encourage enough people to watch this phenomenal show so that hopefully someone that is knowledgeable and talented enough comes along, watches the hell out of and enjoys the hell out of the series and goes to make an eight hour long parasynical utopia style video that this absolute masterpiece of a series truly deserves. And if you, yes, you watching this are that person and make that video, let me know because I will watch the absolute fucking shit out of it. Because more people seriously need to know about and watch the episodic sci-fi masterpiece that is Future Man. because he spanks it to this one, Tiger. Uh, that is not true. How does Jesus sound here? Thanks so much for watching and joining me here again for another short rambly video on a recent series I have watched that I am recently very passionate about. This happens like at least once a month or so. I made that cyberpunk video and now there's this one. Yeah, sure. It might not get many views, but all I need, all I ever want is one person who would be willing to watch this series and enjoy the hell out of it and make another video on it and spread the awareness just, just to make this all worth it. Fucking hell, like genuinely this series is fantastic and it needs more attention and it is criminal that it doesn't have it. So yeah, anyway, if you like what I do here, feel free to like, comment and subscribe. The next video more than likely will be a more traditional analysis on Double Zeta Gundam, which I'm very excited to get into. And who knows, I know you guys like Zoids content, so maybe we'll get a bit spicy with some more Zoids content in the near future. Anyway, hope you all have a great rest of your day and I'll see you all next time. Peace.